Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here, welcome back to another Destiny 2 video. And in today's video, we are taking a more in-depth look at the farm, which is the new social space, the only social space in Destiny 2. If you guys missed any of my previous videos where I spoke about this, then Bungie made a decision to kind of do away with the idea of having multiple social spaces because they tend to fragment the player base. You then find that people spend different times at different areas and then often you kind of lose that sort of community feel. They did say, of course, there may well be times further down the line when they, of course, expand the story, DLC and stuff. We may well see other social spaces come back. But for Destiny 2, the focus is on one singular space. So that way, Whenever anyone is not out there questing and they are back at the farm doing their stuff, whether that be, you know, sorting out gear, buying stuff, or just chilling out, waiting for their friends to come online, then you can be guaranteed you should always be able to see some people, which is going to be really cool. However, today kicks off the beginning of the month of exclusive coverage from IGN as part of their IGN first, and the very first thing they spoke about was the farm. I will, of course, leave their video linked down below, and out of respect to IGN, I'm only going to be using a few screenshots in this video. If you want to see the actual gameplay of them walking around the farm, seeing it living, breathing, and in action, then definitely click that link down below. But I want to take the time to actually speak about some of the stuff they shared during the video today. So if you do enjoy this, then a like would be super appreciated. Comment down below if you have any questions, and also let me know what you guys think of this new social space. So to begin with, the actual video and the exclusive look at the farm came from Destin Legary and also Ryan Ebinger from Bungie as the narrative lead. And in that, they, for a few minutes, walked around the farm and showed a few different things. Now, this wasn't a completely in-depth tour. They weren't going to be diving into vendors, looking at kind of the equipment they're selling or some of the other items like that. There are also some kind of hidden secrets in the spaces. So those sort of things, they're obviously not going to show at this stage. They probably won't show that until launch. We'll probably have to wait and find that stuff out for ourselves. However, what they did do is give us a better look at some of the different areas and some of the vendors we will, of course, be interacting with. So to begin with, this is your kind of overlook of the actual farm itself it's a really cool looking place i do like it so to give you guys some context when we get kicked out of the tower after the very first mission and gaul effectively destroys our place we've called home for the past three years we will then go and regroup and set up here which is on the european dead zone so this is in the shadow of that shard in the background which is the shard of the traveler and that's of course going to be integral to the story us getting powers back all that kind of stuff like that but this is going to be our new place so we set up here and the space you basically enter at the beginning will be different to the space that you have say at the end of the story this social space the farm is going to evolve over time so they said that say some characters will come and go and of course you can see people building around in the background so it may well be that the actual architecture of the space changes over the course of the story now i'm not entirely sure whether that would be the case because if they did do that then you'd have to have say different instances depending on how far you're on the story that might also split people apart so i'm not entirely sure how they're going to manage that but either way they said this is a space that will evolve over time so in the same way that the story is all going to be about trying to rebuild and kind of like fight back for humanity, so too will your space. It's also worth noting on the population front that this social space in Destiny 2 will hold a total of 26 players. That's 25 and yourself, of course. But prior to that in Destiny 1, social space is held, I believe it was 16 players, 14, 16, something like that. Can't remember the number off the top of my head. But either way, it was not as many as this. So 26 players can now sit in the social space which is really cool that now means that if you want to kind of get some really big group photos some big dance parties and also most importantly if you want to take part in the football matches you could technically speaking have a 13 v 13 game because you could have 26 people there so that's gonna be super cool especially on launch day where the game is buzzing super full when it comes to say raid days or anything like that where people are sort of gearing up and they've or they've finished the raid and they sort of go back to the tower to show off their new gear all those kind of things it's going to be really really sort of alive and just a cool place to hang out now this next section here they actually jump over to walking around as their character we actually get to see a kind of cool cloak on the back of this awoken hunter right here it's kind of cool anyway it looks kind of sort of basic gear but either way something new regardless but this is them kind of walking down to the center you can of course see that shard in the background again but if we then jump over to the next section this is going to be our new postmaster darby 5530 so of course as you've always done you can go to your postmaster you can grab your rewards any items you don't get while you're out there collect them basically usual postmaster functionality it is still there right at the center of the farm so no problems there however if we then jump over to the next area this is a kind of like waterfall area in the background you can see in the far right that is the soccer goal or the football goal i'll speak more about that in a second they did say while kind of like looking over this area that there will be lots of different things you can do in the social spaces ways to kind of keep yourself busy amuse yourself one thing they did say is that there will be things that once you worked out how to do them that will allow you to kind of 
alter the way you behave in the social space. There might be things you can do to gain a speed boost. You can run around faster. There might be things that will actually put like a different effect on your character, which will then make people look at you and be like, you know, what, what is that? I would kind of probably liken that to, say, how if you came back from a nightfall back in the olden days, then you had this sort of glowing blue flame on your head. And often that kind of made new players look at you and think, what is that? I want to kind of get involved in that. They want to try and sort of, you know, build on that in this social space. And they said there will be things hidden around there. You're going to have to work out how to do it yourself. They're obviously not going to tell us about it. Probably similar, I guess, in that vein to, say, the hidden buttons in the tower that kind of turn the fans on. Or the way that in Fell Winter Peak, you can then, of course, ring the bells to unlock an achievement. Then, you know, those sort of things, they're probably going to extend that in the farm. And the fact that you can, of course, do something to run around faster is going to be handy for shopping. But also, if you can do something to, say, get a really cool aura or an effect around your character, and you've just got some really cool new gear, let's just say you come back from the new raid, you're decked out in this new gear, you then do whatever you need to do in the farm, you get this cool aura over you, and everyone's coming over and be like, this person looks awesome. That is going to be pretty sweet. But obviously, right now, much like the raids, they're going to be tight-lipped on that, because those kind of secrets are things that we as players need to discover ourselves. Of course, jumping over here, you can see in the background, a very near the central fountain is the Cryptarch. Now, this is a question we've had for a long time, and of course, there was an interview the other day that made it sound like the Cryptarch was indeed still going to be there. Well, of course, the Cryptarch as a you know group of people, or the Cryptarchs, they still exist, but we thought specifically Mr. Rahul himself was going to be in the game. And it may well still be that he is. However, the Cryptarch in this particular social space is not Rahul. It is Tira Khan. She's come all the way from Felwinter Peak and she survived and she is the Cryptarch at the farm. Now, they did say, of course, at the beginning that characters can come and go. So it may well be as part of this. Maybe we have different Cryptarchs throughout the time in the farm. Or maybe it's like, you know, Rahul's got his own story. Maybe he's gone somewhere else. Maybe Rahul is dead. Honestly, we don't know right now. As I say, the interview with Luke Smith the other day did kind of make it sound like Rahul is part of the furniture and like Destiny without him wouldn't really be the same. But then that could have been misinterpreted because they were speaking more specifically about Cryptox. So honestly, at this stage, we don't know. All we do know is that Tira Khan is the Cryptox in the farm. Interestingly as well, that thing that's right behind her on the left, that looks remarkably similar to that thing that used to be on the speaker's desk. Now, of course, we don't know what happened to the speaker in the story right now. There's, of course, that segment during the very first mission where Ikora Ray goes to try and find him. And, of course, he's not there. So, you know, that could be significant or it could just be that Tira Khan was like, you know what? I kind of like that. I'm going to take it. So either way, that's there. Something just kind of bear in mind. Another thing is, of course, when ships fly in and people drop in and fly out, then they will be a lot more kind of central in the space. They actually fly over the top, so a lot closer than before. So this does look pretty cool, of course, when things are coming and going. Gives this sort of feeling that the space is alive, living and breathing and whatnot. So that looks pretty sweet. But if we then jump over to this next area, this is effectively where they are kind of fixing up ships because, of course, the kind of ongoing narrative that we are building this space and we are trying to sort of fight back and, you know, like, get ready to sort of fight the Cabal and whatnot, then they're in this area, they're fixing up ships. You can, of course, see that when you're walking through. And then there's this other area over here where they are trying to build or reconstruct the battle frames. Now, if you guys saw my lore video a while ago, the one that I did the kind of Destiny Index video on... Lord Shax, speaking about the Twilight Gap, then of course you will know that Lord Shax fought alongside a load of battle frames. These are effectively those frames. So again, you know, another means to fight back against the Cabal is to try and get these up and running so they can then fight alongside us again. So whether we'll see them in any kind of story mission where we actually get to run alongside some of these frames, that could be really cool. Or whether they will just be a decorative thing in the tower, again, we honestly won't know. But for the time being, that's something else to uh, note while we're there. There are also, of course, chickens on the farm. There didn't appear to be, when they were walking around, any interact buttons, so it doesn't seem like you can pick them up, like in Zelda, and then fly with them. Maybe you can, I don't know, slide tackle into them like you can the balls, but I'm going to imagine they're probably not going to let you do that, because I guess Peter probably wouldn't be too happy. Either way, it's a farm, there are chickens, so yes, it is still living and breathing in that sense. There's also, again, the soccer goal, or the football goal I spoke about before. This is, there'll basically be a, a football lying around in the pitch, and you can actually kick it into the goal. And whereas before, people in the tower would use the purple ball to effectively play these games themselves. This time, there is actually a physical mechanic. The only thing I'm going to take as a snippet from the video is this here. When they score, you can actually see there is a sound. There's an effect. So for those of you guys that do actually want to play games, again, with the 26 people in the thing, you could have a 13v13 game. That could be pretty hectic. Definitely something I want to do on day one. But now that there's actually a dedicated space for this, I can see Guardians probably having like football tournaments and stuff. So it's going to be pretty sweet. But aside from that, that's pretty much it for the time being. So that was a kind of very brief look at the farm social space. That's some of the things to kind of bear in mind. So as a recap, it will support 26 players. It's supposed to evolve 
over time and of course also some characters will come and go so i'm going to be interested to see how that actually does evolve over the kind of time period i've played other games in the past like mmos say guild wars where like the place you start in is drastically different later on in the game so if they kind of go down that route then it could be really cool because as you progress through the story you actually feel like you are actively impacting the world around you and changing things you know it's definitely doable in the sort of gameplay sense because you could just have different instances for different people depending on where they are in the story so maybe it's something they'll do but either way can't wait to see how that's implemented but i definitely do like the look of this base it does look really cool it's nice to be in the european dead zone so yeah let me know what you guys think. Comments down below. Again, definitely check out the video. IGN have got some awesome coverage coming this month. There are some more news dropping tomorrow. They're going to be talking about Bungie's vision for Destiny 2. Something else on Friday. And of course, then it continues the following week. So I'll keep you guys up to date. So do stay tuned later on this week, probably tomorrow as well, for some more information. But for the time being, thanks for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.